Failure is not final. As long as you keep saying yes to any new opportunity that comes along, no matter how small or trivial it may seem at the time. I was a junior high school band reject. But by saying yes to a series of small opportunities, I performed on a world stage and probably helped save the world from nuclear proliferation just four years later. In my hometown, the junior high school band had, well, two, junior high school had two bands. Wind ensemble, concert band. All the better musicians were put up into the wind ensemble. The rest, concert band. I thought I was a pretty good saxophone player, so there was only one option for me, wind ensemble. Right up until the junior high band director came down to my elementary school and said, uh, two of your friends are going to wind ensemble, you're going to concert band. I protested, but he said, sorry, there's just no room for you. He gave out the rest of the assignments and then spoke to the whole class and said, decisions are final. But if anyone was willing to try the oboe or bassoon, it would be automatic acceptance to wind ensemble. I went right up to him and I said, I'll try bassoon. He said, great. But you're going to have to take lessons this summer and practice really hard in order to be ready for the school year. Are you really willing to make that commitment? I said, yes. I couldn't wait for my parents to come home that night. Mom, Dad, good news. I made the wind ensemble. All you have to do is sign this form and pay for me to take bassoon lessons this summer. <laughs> to their credit, they didn't even flinch. Or if they did, I didn't notice. I had achieved my goal. So I took the lessons that summer, and I practiced really hard. And by the time the school year started, I had achieved a rudimentary level. And the rest of the year, the band director would help me as much as he could, but by spring, he had taught me everything he knew. He came to me one day and said, you know, if you're serious about uh, improving, you really need private lessons. Are you willing to do that? I said, yes. So with my parents' blessing, he arranged an audition for me at our regional music conservatory. I got in. So every Tuesday of eighth grade, my grandmother would drive me to my private lessons, and I progressed pretty quickly. I actually auditioned and got into several regional and all-state bands and orchestras. I didn't know it could get any better than that. And then I got the phone call. A man with an accent I still can't place called me one day that summer. He said he was the manager of the Greater Boston Youth Symphony Orchestras. He got my name from the conservatory. He said uh, the orchestras needed bassoonists was wondering if I'd be willing to audition. I'd never heard of this orchestra. I said, yes. About a week after my audition, I get a letter in the mail. Mom, Dad, good news. I got into an orchestra. <laughs> so freshman year of high school was a steep learning curve. But being surrounded by some of the state's best junior musicians was exhilarating. By the end of the year, we had performed in Boston's best concert halls. That's when orchestra management came to me with a request. They said the senior orchestra group was going to go on a tour of Europe the following summer. They were going to play some challenging pieces by Rimsky-Korsakov and Stravinsky, one of which required extra bassoonists. <laughs> Would I be willing to learn how to play the contrabassoon and play in both orchestras next year? And of course, for my efforts, I'd be invited to go on the tour. I didn't know what a contrabassoon was, but I knew what a tour of Europe was. <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> so the following summer, we toured Austria, Hungary, Yugoslavia. We traveled by bus for over three weeks. We saw some spectacular scenery. We performed in some of the world's most beautiful concert halls. We were invited to participate in the Dubrovnik Summer Festival, a world-renowned cultural event in back then Yugoslavia. But our time in Soviet bloc Hungary outshined them all. We got over the border after having our passports checked by armed Soviet guards. We were given a day to tour the city of Budapest and interact with its people. And that night's concert was broadcast live on Hungarian national television. And we performed live for an audience of 2,000, 800 of whom were physicians who had gathered from 60 different countries around the world. They were part of an organization called International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War. We obviously knew it was a big deal. 
but we had no idea what we had been a part of until later that year. Those physicians were credited with convincing Soviet leadership to reduce their nuclear arms supply. And they were credited with educating the entire world until the total devastation that a nu single nuclear strike would cause. Those physicians were awarded that year's Nobel Peace Prize. And we had been there. Now, history may not remember us, and you probably won't find my name in any of the history books, but I like to think at least one of those physicians was inspired by those American kids playing music written by Russian composers. Perhaps one was particularly inspired by, I don't know, skinny kid playing the highly coveted third bassoon, second contrabassoon part. <laughs> so, did I have a part in preventing nuclear war? <laughs> yeah, I probably did. Just four years before, I was a junior high school band reject. But by saying yes to a, se by saying yes to a series of small opportunities, I performed on a world stage and probably helped save the world. <laughs> this is what I learned. If you just keep saying yes, you stop coming up with excuses to say no. Because if you want something badly enough and you refuse to quit trying, no failure is final. Keep taking small steps forward. Maybe you'll have your own good news to share. Be a part of something bigger than you could ever imagine and maybe you'll help save the world too. Thank you.